Hey everybody, Neil Malik from Knack Training here, bringing another everyday office video. And in today's video, I want to demonstrate how Power Query is the fastest way to get from the dirty data on the left-hand side of my screen to the cleaned up versions on the right side of my screen. So to begin with, let's look at the scenario as a whole. As you can see, I have my shift rosters here in a CSV file. Because I have them in a CSV file, what you'll immediately begin to notice is that, for instance, this date column is inappropriate. What's actually happening here is that the system that's been outputting our rosters uses the weird format of day, then month, then year. That's weird to us in, a, in the United States. And what that means is that when Excel goes to convert that, it sees 1, 1, or 1, 2, or 1, 3, and converts them incorrectly. And when it sees something like 13-1-2020, it doesn't realize that that's supposed to mean the 13th of January in the year 2020. And the other big problem here is that they've decided to output my roster as a list of people who are there separated by semicolons. So all of this is to say we have some issues with our data. I'm going to now close the CSV file because instead of plowing ahead with the CSV file, I'm instead going to launch Excel fresh and start off with a new blank workbook. So I go to the data tab at the top of my screen, click on the get data drop down menu and pull the data out of a CSV file in this situation. When I go find the CSV file that's sitting in that folder, I find that it comes into this dialog right here and it says, okay, from what I can tell, there's some weird stuff going on here that's just text. And you can see here the roster is just the generic flowing together with the semicolons in between. So I definitely need to do some transformations. And Power Query is amazing at this. I click on the Transform Data button. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take date, shift, and roster and promote those to be headers. On the Home tab, I have Use First Row as headers there. And you can again see that the date column it thinks is simply text. You can see that by the little ABC right here. Now before we move forward, let's see where this would break if we went to the ABC button and chose that this was a date column. Well, when we see 18-01-2020, we see that, it, that Power Query, when it tries to handle that, gives us error messages. So we know that that's incorrect. I go over here to my applied steps on the right, and I get rid of that attempt that I just made right there. Instead, I'm going to go back to the ABC button right here and go to the option at the bottom that says using locale, which is where I'm going to be able to specify that the date formatting that you see there is not what we're accustomed to. By clicking on using locale, I can repeat myself that it is in fact a date column, but that the locale is, you know, something that uses day, then month, then year formatting. And uh, one example of that is the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom would use that date format. So if I choose that as my locale, you see here the Power Query recognizes that the dates will be structured differently. And when I click OK, it automatically detects and converts all those dates. I don't have to do anything else. Here's something else from a transformation perspective that Power Query does amazingly well. I actually want to be able to see what Marcos Fuentes' full schedule looks like. And it's really difficult to pull Marcos Fuentes out of every one of these individual boxes. So instead, what I'm going to do is go to this column right here choose the split column button at the top. There is the delimiter of the semicolon between each of these different names. So I'll choose by delimiter and I'll choose a semicolon as the splitter between each name. But I don't want my roster to go horizontally across the screen. Instead, what I'd like to do is go under advanced options and split this into rows. Now I'll have a new row for each person who showed up for each shift on each day. Then I click OK. And just like that, I have Marcos Fuentes, Chibui, Sarah Kumari, etc., all on the first, 
all in the first shift. That's incredibly quick and easy to do. Now let's take a look at one other little problem that'll come up from time to time. I'm first going to the date column and sorting by date, then going to the shift column, sorting by shift, and then going to the roster column and sorting by name. And actually I'll rename the roster column to employee name. Now, if you notice right in here, the person who is filling out the roster put in Marcos Munoz twice for the first shift on the 2nd of January. So that's going to be an issue. I don't want extra shifts to be associated with any individual person. To remove duplicates based on all three of these columns, watch how easy this is. I click on the date column over here on the left, hold down the shift key and click on the employee name column over here on the far right. And now when I go to the remove rows drop down menu and tell it to remove duplicates, that second Marcos Munoz on the 2nd of January is going to be removed. And just like that, I can get it down to everybody who showed up for the first shift on January 1st, etc. Now I can go to the home tab at the top of the screen, click close and load and load this directly to the page as a table. And I can further go through and find any filtered results I want. If I'm a particular employee, for example, I can go to the drop down menu and say, could you please tell me when Paul Barron worked and Paul Barron's shifts all show up in this table.